In this lesson, we're going to analyze multiple methods that work to read data into data frames or series in pandas. The methods, to be honest, will be very simple in the way they work, but they are so powerful that they are going to admit multiple parameters that sometimes can be confusing. So we don't want you to be scared, right? Feel overwhelmed by the number of parameters. You can always start from the very basics. And as you need things from the methods, you have special cases. For example, you try to read a special CSV file that has a special different separator or some specific uh, new thing that you haven't seen yet. You can always look for that and try to make sense of the method. So for example, this is read CSV, one method that we've done, we've used a couple of times, reading a CSV file, a comma separated value file. And as you can see, it accepts multiple parameters. They're all right here. The question is, is it possible to remember all of them? Well, it will be possible to remember the most important ones. Something that I can definitely tell you is that you will never sit to just memorize this parameter. It's something as you will be using them, you will uh, try to understand how they work. And with the repetition and with experience, these things are going to be more clear. So again, you can always start simple. And actually, let's get started with just one in here, we're going to start reading uh, prices of Bitcoin. So this is the original CSV that we will be reading, as you can see, a CSV again, is a, a comma separated values list, right? So in this case, we have each row represents a record in this case, price of, of Bitcoin. This is the the year or just actually the timestamp, the moment in time, it's uh, April the second, uh, April the third, again, and you have a given price for each one of these values, we will try to read these and we're going to just use the default version of the read CSV. So from all these parameters, we're just passing the file path that we will be using nothing else, no options, no parameters whatsoever. And let's see what it does. As you can see, the read CSV method, what it's doing is reading the entire CSV. And it's assuming that the first row of the Bitcoin CSV file is the header that somehow this is the the name of the field, right? Or and this is the name of the field, which isn't true. And if you check the documentation, you're going to see here that the parameter header by default, is going to be infer, right? So it will try to read it from the CSV file, you can actually uh, change that behavior saying header none, there is no header in this given uh, data frame. So when you read it again, you see that pandas has assigned a couple of uh, automatic columns. There are multiple things to change, especially with that with C with CSVs, because depending the platform, if it's Windows, if it's Linux, if it's Mac, uh, or if you are dealing, for example, with uh, with databases that are exporting um, CSV files, the or the programs Excel, uh, access other programs, the export process can generate different types of CSVs. Some CSVs can be separated by commas, some CSVs can be separated by pipes by different things or uh, semicolons. So you can change you can tune all that in the read CSV method. So given the one that we have right here, we just have we have set the header to none. So we have these two uh, numbers automatically generated numbers from uh, pandas, and we're going to set the columns manually. So we now say that the columns are actually the timestamp and the price, we can see the types that we have, and we see that timestamp is it was read as a string, we haven't seen in detail, the day type, the day type, um, the timestamp type in pandas, but we will actually be able to transform this string based type into something a little bit more useful, which is a type ba uh, daytime based uh, type. So instead of being object, it's going to be a timestamp one. So I can do that by just saying that I'm going to replace completely timestamp to be of type daytime. So now you're going to see that it looks a little bit more like a date. And I, when I check this, the date type, I get that it's a daytime 64. It's actually uh, related to NumPy. So I've run a couple of operations. The final one is setting these thing to be the index. So the time sum is going to be the index. Now, there you go. The time sum is the index, the price is the column. So 
Again, I've run multiple operations here. I write the CSV with header equals none. I set the name of the columns. I changed the type of timestamp and I finally assigned the index to timestamp. The read CSV method is so powerful that lets us do all that at the same time. Here are all the operations that I run. I can pretty much replicate it in just one line. I can do read CSV. I can say no header, but I can pass the names of my columns. So if you check the documentation names accepts an array like data structure, and it's the list of column names to use. Finally, I can say which one is going to be the index and please try parsing the date so we can see it in action. Finally, uh, a preview of what we will see in, in following lessons, we can get a simple plot of the Bitcoin price to see that everything was parsed correctly. So remember, you can always consult the documentation of the methods right within from the notebook. In this case, you can see the whole signature of uh, red CSV. There is another example here that deals with another CSV file. You can check it uh, on your own. It's more CSV. Um, we can I want to show you a couple of other methods we will be using. The read CSV method also accepts our regular text files because a CSV is act after all just a regular text file. So just for you to know if you're finding like a .txt or a .dat file that it's just textual data, you can read it. What about JSON files? The JSON method is also complex, especially because of the way the JSON, da JSON data can be structured. It can be hierarchically structured. So for example, we're gonna read the, the games.json file, this one right here, which is a list originally, or at the outside of structure is a list of records. Each deck record is an object in JSON. It's like a dictionary in Python. that has the, um, these records right here. I can read this JSON with the just read JSON parameter. There you go. Reading JSON files, to be honest, is going to be complicated because it depends on what's the structure of the JSON file. So sometimes you will have to make it work somehow on your own. So this is an example. I tried to read a JSON file and you can see this data source in here, but again, it looks like it's not being parsed correctly. In this case, we are reading an entire dictionary. This is wrong. So what we will need to do is to do some manual work of this. So in this case, we're gonna import the JSON library. We will need to parse the JSON file with Python and actually read something different. And again, it will require a little bit more manual work. In this case, we're using the from dict method, class method of the data frame class, and we are giving the source of the data and also the orientation of the data in order to parse it correctly. This is definitely one of the most complicated parts of reading files or external data, working with JSONs, because JSON files, again, they are not tabular by default. They, are, they accept a lot, a lot of uh, um, uh, nesting and hierarchical records, so it's usually challenging to read them. What about an API? The methods we've seen here, they all work with just reading, for example, data directly from uh, the internet. But you can also, in, in this case, we want to show you this example that is, again, a little bit more complicated. The um, given, oh, I changed it. Let's go back again. There you go. The, um, this is a, um, a Star Wars API, which is free and open. You can, it's used actually for, for um, testing purposes and for learning purposes. This API has a list of people in the Star Wars universe, right? So in this case, we have Luke Skywalker is the first one, C-3PO is the, uh, the second one, R2-D2. Again, we have a list of characters in Star Wars. Now, this is also a hierarchical structure in JSON. We have, this is the, out, the outside um, structure, which is a dictionary and has count, next, previews, and within it, there is a key results, which the key results is the one that has all the records. 
So this is when we have this hierarchical uh, nesting or, or, or hierarchical way of working with data. By itself, also each record has a list of films, a list of species, a list of vehicles. So again, it's going to be a little bit more complicated to read it. Uh, we will usually use the requests library to read external data from the API and somehow, right, try to make it work. Um, we can also use the the from dict method that you saw before. So in this case, we are using the read JSON. These are similar. The read JSON, the problem again is the results is all nested. You should do a second step to unnest it. Usually in this case, what we're doing, we're using the from dict, running it directly from a JSON file and using especially the key results. So we're just passing these um, subset of the entire data. Finally, to read data from databases, we're going to use the read SQL method, which is right here. Um, it's a simple method because uh, SQL is usually a little bit more, um, it's, it's a higher level of abstraction than just a regular file. And usually SQL is tabular data, so it's going to play very nicely with data frames. But at the beginning, let's let's get started. In this case, what we're going to require is a connection to a database. This depends on what given engine you're using. If you're using Postgres or SQL Server or MySQL, etc. Um, and with it, you usually create a, a connection. In this case, let me just show you how the regular uh, SQL query works. There is no pandas here. I can do these uh, select everything from employees and I can fetch the results, which again, it, uh, it's a, a tabular result. I can combine these with pandas. So what I'm gonna do here is use the read SQL method, create a connection and run the read SQL method, passing the query and passing that connection as a parameter. Okay, so in this case, the pandas gonna use this connection to run this query and store everything in a data frame. There is an extra parameter right here, so it parses the date automatically. In this case, we see the whole table is pulled from the database, in this case, employees. Um, there is nothing else to see here, it's just pretty much the same thing we saw before. There is also a read SQL table method that is using SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is one of the most popular um, Python ORMs, object relational mappers. If you don't know what it is yet, don't worry. At some point you might need it, especially if you're using heavily SQL. In other case, you might not need it, so you can just use Red SQL. Um, to be honest, Red SQL is an, al an alias for both Red SQL query and Red SQL table. So you just usually use Red SQL as it goes and that's it. There are a couple of examples and or exercises, sorry, in this given lecture. So you can practice how to read data. Something we haven't seen here is that with pandas, you can read data directly. You can parse HTML tables online, just like a primitive version of scraping. We will do that in other lessons in the future.